Hi, welcome back to my channel. It's dedicated towards creating narcissistic abuse awareness and more so from a biblical standpoint. And I'll also be discussing other general life issues. I've been looking at marriage in the beginning and I'm still continuing with it. Basing on uh, Matthew chapter 19 verse 4 to 6. They are no longer two but one. The Hebrew word for one is Ehad, the most spoken scripture among the Jews you'll hear. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Ehad has got Aleph, Het, Dalet. Aleph has got a pictogram of the ox head, meaning strong leader, ultimate God, the father Adonai, a thousand gentle teach first. Het, sanctuary, place of protection or refuge. To be cut off, to separate, or private. We've got the light which has got a pictogram of the door. Meaning, doorway, pathway, way, movement in or out, or way of life. We can read this as God the Father in the sanctuary with the Son. Or the first, the ultimate, the doorway to the sanctuary. And remember Christ has said, I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the left and tav in Hebrew. I am the first and the last. The first Yahweh is the Christ is the doorway to the sanctuary. We are looking at the Holy of Holies. When we look at the value of the numbers, Aleph is one, Het is eight, Dalet is four. We come to the value 13, which has the same value of love. Love is Ahava in Hebrew. Ahava is Aleph, Hey, that, hey. Aleph is having the pictogram of the oxide, meaning strong leader, ultimate, God the Father, Adonai, a thousand gentle teach first. Then um, we have hey, which has got the pictogram of a man with ra hands raised towards the heavens, meaning lo, behold, reveal, the revelator, the Holy Spirit show. Then we have vet. Obed, which has got the pictogram of the house or tent floor plan, meaning in son of God family are made within the body. Then we have hay again, which has got the pictogram of a man with hands raised up towards the heavens, meaning lo, behold, reveal the revelator, the Holy Spirit show. Love is God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Son revealed. First John chapter 4 verse 8 tells us Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. A godly man and a godly woman reflects the oneness of God. They are Ehad. They are love. Love must be at the center. A godly marriage must reflect the oneness of God. A marriage where there is truth and lies is not a godly marriage. You are living a lie. And where a lie is, God is absent. So you're going to toil in this marriage. Unless God builds the house, the builders do it in vain. That's why many marriages have failed. They are not built on a foundation. And church is telling people to stay in these marriages. Yet God tells you, godly marriage that I recognize reflects me church is holding people hostage in ungodly marriages i believe it's the greatest apostasy church has committed there's nothing short of it because earthly marriages reflect the godly union the godly marriage of the church and christ unfortunately we've misconstrued the scriptures i don't know who interpreted them for us that generations where the divorce was just not permitted truth is also at the center of it and truth is a met a met we are looking at aleph mem tav aleph has got a pictogram of an of an ox head meaning strong leader ultimate god the father adonai a thousand gentle teach first mem has got a pictogram of water meaning fluid blood calm waters like a fountain chaotic or treacherous waters like a tsunami then tav has got a pictogram of the cross meaning mark sign signature covenant last seal 
ownership, join two things together. Reading this, I got God's blood is the sign, is the mark. You remember how the Israelites had to put blood on their doorposts to prevent the angel of death from uh, killing their firstborn sons? This is it. Truth is God's blood, which is love, because it was expressed at the cross. And when we look at the numbers, Aleph 1, Mem 40, Tav 400, 1 plus 40 plus 400, 441. Small numbers, 4 plus 4 plus 1, 9. So just like Yahweh, Light, Adam, 9, some other nugget also here. When we come to Ehad, we have the number 13. Small numbers, 3 plus 1, we get 4. Love has also got 13. 1 plus 3, 4. 4 has got the meaning of creative works, the world, the first number divided, creation. Above all that we know, 4 is known as the creator. Who is the creator of the heavens and the earth? Christ. So whom do we come back to? The son of God. And we are looking at that. Everything was created through him, by him, bears his signature. Colossians 1 bears witness. The oneness of the covenant of God is based on character and essence, much as how they operate will be different. They have boundaries, what one will do and what one will not do. However, they remain one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. The oneness here is what God talks about. Do not separate two people who are in a godly marriage. You go against God literally. Unfortunately, church has taught us that every marriage is a godly marriage, which is false. One, they overlook the fact that we live in a fallen world. Just like we have jobs which are not godly and God tells us to leave them. He rejoices when we leave them. When you live an ungodly marriage, church condemns you, yet it should be rejoicing with you because an ungodly marriage does not reflect God in any way. It does not reflect the oneness of God. Guess what? You are cast, ostracized, you are condemned, you are shunned, you are looked at as this person who is going against the word of God, yet they are the very ones going against the word of God. They should be actually rejoicing that you have seen the light and gotten out of an ungodly union. Awaiting to be made whole, you are a broken vessel at that point. That needs to be filled. An ungodly marriage teaches you to run on empty, which means you break down. You break down almost as soon as you've, you've started the journey. The entire time, Everyone is seeing a shell walking around. Marrying a toxic person does not translate that marriage into oneness. The only time you can become one in a godly union is when you're a godly woman and you're a godly man and you have said, I do. You've come in love and truth. You're both standing on solid rock, not one standing on sinking sand and the other on solid rock. That is an ungodly marriage. God has called us to holiness. God has called us to set ourselves apart from the rest. How are you any different from the marriages of the world? Yet your marriage is as broken as the world's marriage. You're not reflecting God. That's why we fail to minister to people. We fail to show the power of God because we who are Christians are also living in sin ourselves. Can you imagine the shock? Of what I'm talking about. But that's the truth. Church has taught us to live in ungodly union. Calling it a marriage. Just because you say that I do. Does not translate it into a godly marriage. There are many ungodly marriages. There are many people who gave themselves up. They died in ungodly union. What is even going to shock people out there the more is that. Can you imagine you. You make sure you're a virgin to get married to an ungodly person, a non-believer. Guess what? 
you committed sexual sin. Boom. What I'm sharing, I know is not common, but that is the word of God. As long as you are in a union where one is a liar and you are the truther, if I may, you are in an ungodly marriage. Church will paint it all sorts of colors, but before God, you're in an ungodly marriage. You don't reflect him. Both of you must reflect him to become one. I know my message has been hard, but that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay with me. We need to share the word of God. We need to teach others out there. We have veered off the path of God. I don't know who taught this message that it has been peddled for generations. It's not just now generations. Drop your comments, your revelation, and let's share. Let's grow in the word of God. Thank you so much for watching. Blessings.